What's going on, everybody? It is March 14th, Wednesday sleep. Happy birthday to my wife. And uh, I'm feeling pretty good. Uh, I still have a little bit of congestion, but I actually feel okay. Uh, so I think I've finally gotten past this. It only took five days. Um, just got to keep the fluids in me, I guess. Four games slate tonight. Uh, kind of a weird one because there's a ton of injuries. And I really don't know what to make of it as of now. Um, so let's just get into it. Uh, none of these games had a line yet, which is fascinating, but par for the course for the end of a season. So, you know, this is my best shot. We're in the ballpark for the most of it. Um, only one that I'd be a little wary about was uh, Celtics Wizards, but the side was out. It's just the total that wasn't out. Um, but let's just dig in. Uh, not too much to talk about, but sort of some weird stuff to talk about. Whatever. I'm just I'm babbling. It's been a while. I don't I don't have my flow, my normal like I can do this with my eyes closed type flow. Orlando Magic hosting the Milwaukee Bucks. Magic 102 implied total is seventh. Uh, they are eight point underdog. They will be presumably eight point underdogs at home against the Bucks. Uh, again, I've got Aaron Gordon projected as in. Uh, he still isn't out of the concussion protocol, but um, signs point to him potentially being out for today. So if he's able to get out of the concussion protocol and play tonight, you know, this is what we'll see. If not, shift some stuff around, more minutes to, you know, all the guys that have been playing. Oh, that's damn good water. Um, as for Gordon, 7,800 on FanDuel, 7,300 on DK. It's probably not for me. Um, you know, Milwaukee has the best matchup in terms of point guards, shooting guards, and small forwards. That doesn't necessarily help Aaron Gordon all that much. Um, just to look at those quickly. That all makes sense to me. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I think his grade is perfect for him today. Uh, you know, if he plays, he can be, he can play like an A, but actually be a C. He can play like an F and actually be a C. All of that makes sense. So I think a C is very realistic for Aaron Gordon. Uh, not a ton of interest in Jonathan Simmons. Um, 6,400 is just too much for him. You can get a night like last night where he goes out and puts up nine. Uh, I'll pass. Vooch, though. 8,600 on FanDuel, 8,000 on DK. I see no reason he can't have a really good game here. Not much to worry about uh, in the front court for Milwaukee. Vooch should basically have free reign of whatever he wants. And... I don't know how much better or worse he is with Aaron Gordon on the floor. Let's take take a look at that. Um, that's not the one I wanted. Where's Gordon? Ba, 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 ba. All right. When Aaron Gordon did not play, yeah, Vooch. Averaging 41 fantasy points when Gordon doesn't play, 36 when he does. So uh, I will like Vooch a little bit more if Gordon doesn't play, but I like him regardless. And then uh, DJ Augustin, 4,500 on FanDuel, just a great price for somebody that's going to be playing, you know, the full tilt, so to speak, as a point guard for the Magic. Like, if he gets 30 minutes at 4,500, you take your chances. Uh, if the shots fall for you, if he gets a steal or two, that's all you need. Um, I'd be willing to bet on the minutes there for him. And then, um, you know, if you need filler, Hazonia and Isaac are there. I wouldn't be terribly confident in either of them. They're both just GPP guys. But, uh, yeah, there's lots to like, oddly enough, on this Magic team tonight. Um, they have mostly bad matchups. Uh, second from the bottom at point guard, worst matchup for small forwards and power forwards, but they do have the second best matchup for center, 
which is another reason why I'm interested in Vooch. Uh, not a ton of duds. Um, they have had some people go off against them. So for me, uh, I would want Vooch, then DJ Augustin, um, then probably Gordon for his upside before I wanted to get into Hazoni and Isaac as flyers. Let's go to Milwaukee now. Uh, Bucks with the hypothetical 110 implied total, which would be second. Uh, Brandon Jennings doesn't have a salary on FanDuel, so you can ignore him. On DraftKings, he's 4,400, and I don't think super-duper playable. Really all depends on how many minutes you think he's going to get. I think there's a cap there. I know that he got 24 um, in this first game back and went off, but you know, let's see where that rotation shakes out. <laughs> Now, for Giannis, uh, he's obviously in an exceptional spot, but 12,000 on FanDuel, 10-6 on DK is tough. Coming off a 30-point game, got to clear it.
I have no idea how long I've been talking on mute. <laughs> Uh, it's I guess most of the mad or most of Milwaukee. Yeah, I'm not gonna start over because it's a four game slate, and you know I'm a little pot committed. So clearly I was babbling for a little bit. Uh, I don't know how far back I need to go, but let's just say this: I'm perfectly acceptable with Middleton. Uh, I like Bledsoe as well. I wouldn't have both of those guys together. Uh, just a little bit of Giannis. Um, I don't really have any other interest in anybody else on the Bucks. Uh, if it's even further back than that, which I don't, I have no idea. Uh, I like Vooch a lot, uh, than DJ Augustin. I would go with Gordon, uh, only in a very small amount. And then Hazonia and Isaac for GPPs. You can see I'm out of my element. I'm out of my flow. I just talked for however long I was on mute. Uh, the amount of people that are going to point this out in the comments. And on Reddit, be like, yo, man, you know you were on mute for, like, two minutes. As if, like, they just don't have the pay. They have to tell you in the middle of it all. It's coming. I know it's coming. And now that I said it, it's coming even worse. So I should have just shut my mouth. All right. Boston. I don't even remember if anything I said for Boston was off of mute. So no Kyrie. No Daniel Tice. No Marcus Smart. No Jalen Brown. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No one looking that great. So, Rogier is already 7,300 on FanDuel. Fuck, I can't believe I was on mute for so long. That's so annoying. <laughs> uh, you know, I don't, I don't have a ton of interest in Rogier at that price. Like, he's just fine. I don't have a ton of interest at Tatum at that price on FanDuel. He's just fine. Uh, he looks pretty good at 5,700 on DK, though. Um... You know, Horford is just fine. I, you would think that with all those guys out, you would get a ton of value, but, you know, you don't. Uh, the prices sort of reflect ever, where everybody's supposed to be. Something's going to turn out to be a, a great play here out of Boston, but I don't see what it is on the surface, so just pick and choose those guys accordingly, but that... It's going to be tough to find Boston as the focus of the night. Um, trying to think if there's anything interesting to talk about. Number one matchup against power forwards. Uh, yeah, I don't. Who the hell plays power forward in this scenario? Horford and Marcus Morris, I guess. Yeah, Basile. It doesn't really matter. Uh, this is just not the spot where you're looking to um, jam home anybody. I don't need $7,300 Terry Rozier in my life. To the Wiz. Uh, Wizards, 103.75 uh, hypothetical implied total. One and a half point underdogs in Boston. Um, at least this team is uh, relatively normal today. It's still no wall, obviously, but... Uh, Beal at 8,200, I don't have much of an issue with. I think you need to take, let's, let's take a look at it. We'll see how many minutes they've played without these guys. We'll check out cleaning the glass. Oh God, I'm such an idiot. <laughs> we'll get back into the swing of things soon enough. All right, so 90th percentile defense. If we don't have Kyrie... And Marcus Smart and Daniel Tice and shit, who am I missing? Jalen Brown. If none of these guys are on the floor. What's the defense look like? They might only have like eight possessions. 117. They're still nasty. Okay. Look, I like Beal in this scenario because of who is out. Um,. No Jalen Brown, no Marcus Smart. By default, sort of has to be a benefit to Beal. Uh, it's just, it's going to be a lot different rotations for Boston. Communication will be a little bit different. I think that Beal can feast on something like that. 
Uh, I'm going to give him a boost just because I think he deserves a boost. I want him to grade out a little bit better so people don't ask me why I hate Beal tonight. Um, but I like Beal. Grade regardless. I think there's a lot of upside there. Uh, I like this spot for Washington. Uh, Porter, uh, I'm generally indifferent on. I don't feel like I ever get him on the nights that he's actually playing well. Coming off of back-to-back 20-point fantasy games, although, to be fair, so is Beal. Uh, I just like the ability for Beal to have the ball in his hands, even though apparently the ball doesn't stay in anybody's hands now that John Wall is out. Um, I don't. I, I'm not the biggest fan of Porter, although on DK it's a it's a different story. That sixty five hundred dollar price point is is fine by me. Uh, other than that, you know, these guys suck on Fanduel. Uh, you can get to Ubre on DK. Um, you can. You can run out Mark uh, Markeith Morris on DK if you want. Watch out just in case uh, Markeith and Marcus switch at halftime. Could get weird. Uh, but yeah, I, I really like Beal tonight. It, I know it flies in the face of the grade, but don't necessarily pay. Like, don't treat those things as gospel. It's just an indicator, you know, an easier way for people to see things. Um, dig into the bigger story. I think there's some upside in Beal because of the injuries. Kings, 99.5 implied total is dead last, uh, if this were the actual total. Uh, six hypothetical underdog point... Oh my god, this is just brutal. Potentially... <laughs> Cheers, guys. I've got the Kings as six-point underdogs at home against the Heat. Oh, is that so hard to say, honestly? Is it Friday yet? Got the wife trapped in Boston in the snowstorm on her birthday. I'm home, sick with the puppy dogs, going stir crazy. I haven't been in the office since Friday, although I went for like a half hour yesterday. I just need like humans. Dogs don't talk back, unfortunately. Man, I don't like the Kings tonight. There's just a, there's a wealth of garbage out there. Oh boy. So Willie Cauley Stein is probably one of the things that I'd be interested in. Um, Sixty five hundred on Fanduel, fifty nine hundred on DK. Uh, you know he's just he's got the ability to do well. It's basically the only thing that I can say. Now let's try this again. There, I turned it back off. Now we're good. Um, I can't figure out the difference between Bogdan and Buddy Heald. Uh, like, you know, a perfect example. Buddy Heald plays 27 minutes, puts up 33 fantasy points, Bogdan sucks balls. In this game, Buddy Heald plays 15 minutes, Bogdan puts up 32 fantasy points, Buddy Heald sucks balls. Who knows? 36 and 18, 28 and 14. I don't, I got nothing. So, pick one, have fun. There doesn't appear to be any rhyme or reason to it. Um, so whatever you want to do with them, just split your exposure. Lean a little bit more to healed if you need the money. Uh, I don't really want to go after De'Aaron Fox unless it's on DK. I don't really want to go after Sacramento at all here. Uh, yeah, I'm just perpetually scared of Miami. So Willie Cully Stein is the only guy that I will probably have with any sort of happiness. To the Heat, hypothetically six-point favorites in Sacramento. Lots to like here. So, no Whiteside, uh, no Wade, but we've got Tyler Johnson at 5,000 on FanDuel, 5,000 at DK. Um, played 35 minutes in the last game, only got 23 fantasy points, which is perfect. Uh, I think the minutes are ramping up. Uh, he should see, you know, north of 30 here. And that's a great value at 5,000. He has, he has the opportunity to go and really fill up the stat sheet. Uh, I love, 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 love him tonight. Um, he's going to be one of the guys that I have the most of. Just because 
there's a limited amount of value out there and him at 5000 like I wouldn't be surprised if he got into the mid 30s and that's a gigantic return on a four game slate um I don't feel as good about Dragic although at 6500 on FanDuel you know I can uh, I can get myself there uh, 7,200 on DK is just ludicrous. I wouldn't touch that with a 10-foot pole. But on DraftKings, or on FanDuel, he's uh, perfectly acceptable. I think Justice Winslow's salary has gotten a bit too high. Um, that's sort of an avoid spot for me. What I want to do is look at the three big guys, Olenek, Bam, and James Johnson. Uh, you kind of got to figure that one of them plays pretty well. If I had to bet on anyone, um, it would probably be Kelly Olynyk. Although I would okay, I would say Bam would be my last pick of the three. Uh, Kings give up a ton of threes, so I think that fits uh, like the Kelly Olynyk mold a little bit more. Um, so I would go Olenek, James Johnson, Bam in that regard. Uh, this is also, you know, it could be a decent game for Wayne, but you would really need a bunch of threes. Uh, but at 4,000, you know, it's worth a look on a four-game slate. Uh, Sacramento's been pretty bad against shooting guards, so, you know, feel free to take a look at Wayne, even though, you know, I can give him that little boost so people don't freak out. I still didn't even move it, whatever. Uh, I'm going to have a lot of Tyler Johnson. Uh, I'm going to shade myself closer towards Olenek and James Johnson over Bam. Uh, and then I'm fine with having Wayne and some like GPP stacks for Miami. Uh, Miami looks good. Uh, I generally like Miami anyway, so that won't change. I don't know what to make of Josh Richardson. Uh, I played 16 minutes in the last game, 21 before that, 22 before that. He's you know, like the best all-around player on Miami, which makes it a little weird. Uh, salary's taking a tumble. If you think that that's going to change and he's going to get back up to his 30-plus minutes, then you should smash the shit out of him at 5,200 because that's way too low. Finally, the Golden State Warriors. 118.5 implied total would be first. I have them as 11-point favorites at home hosting the Lakers. We will have no Steph Curry. We have no Draymond Green. We have no other guys and further down the Warriors bench that don't matter. But what we want to do is say, and this is incredibly obvious, Kevin Durant is by far the best play on the board. 10-5 on FanDuel. Um, he will be, without question, the chalkiest stud. Maybe the chalkiest player. Uh, probably the chalkiest player just because of position and slate size, and the fact that he's only 10-5, which is nuts. Uh, I love it. It's hard to not love it. Um, I don't really have much else to say. It's a little scarier on DK. He's $900 more expensive for some strange reason. Um, but there's no reason to shy away from it here. No reason to shy away from Clay Thompson either. Uh, B-plus on both sites. 6700 on both sites. Uh uh, he's going to have the ability to do whatever he would like with uh, Steph and Draymond out. So no problem sm slamming him. Uh, Quinn Cook at minimum salary on FanDuel, I'm totally okay with. Uh, 3300 on DK, totally okay there. While the grades don't grade out, it's you know just because of the lack of like true upside. But he should play close to 30 minutes. I know that he's done that in the last two and barely hit value to combine the two, but... Uh, against the Lakers, I'd be willing to take a chance on Quinn Cook getting a couple garbage buckets and, uh, you know, getting in and around value. He's not, I, I wouldn't call him a lock. I wouldn't have, like, an overwhelming amount of him. But he's, uh, you know, a minimum salary guy on the Warriors in a game that should have an overwhelming amount of points. It's not going to take many, like, fast breaks or steals or anything to get him to where he needs to be. And then finally, uh, you know, you can you can get yourself to like Iguodala, Caspi, Nick Young uh, in some GPPs. I wouldn't trust them all too too much, uh, but 
I don't have a real big problem with it. It's the Lakers. Um, but I'll have an overwhelming amount of Durant and Clay, as will, I would imagine, most of the people playing tonight. And no live stream tonight. Four games, only one game at 7 o'clock. We might not even have news heading into lock. Uh, I'm going to do another big round of chugging medicine laying in bed once I get home. So I want to beat this as much as I can. No sense in wasting it on this uh, garbage slate. Finally, the Los Angeles Lakers, who could be 11-point underdogs in Golden State. Uh, we've got KCP, 6,300 on FanDuel, 6,000 on DK. Um, I'm more than okay with that. Uh, he's put up 30 in his last three. He's put up 30 in four of his last five, one of those being a 44-point game. Uh, if he does that, you're you're happy with you know, getting that sort of performance out of him. Uh, B-plus on both. Sounds great to me. Uh, Kuzma, 6,800 on FanDuel, 6,600 on DK. Uh, again, I'm going to have a bunch of him. This should be a great spot for him. Uh, going to get all the minutes he can handle. Grades out really well. Probably grades out a little too high. I do want to nerf that a little bit. That makes me feel better. But I like it a lot. Same for Lonzo, 7,300. Uh, opposite of Quinn Cook for most of the game, so that'll be nice. Um, B plus works for me. It's a little scarier on DK, but you know Lonzo has the opportunity to get himself up into the 40s. Three games, 41 or higher in the past three weeks. Uh, and that's what you're looking for. I mean, you'd be more than happy with that. Julius Randle, too, 7,400 on FanDuel. These guys are criminally underpriced on FanDuel. Uh, you don't have a choice but to smash the living shit out of them. Um, Randall put up 40 in his last game, which would be a value, uh, would be plus value. He put up 68 the game before that, which would obviously be plus value. Uh, even Brooke Lopez, although this one's going to be a little bit less interesting for me. He's at 6,700 now. Uh, he'd be the guy I have the least amount of, unless we're counting Isaiah as well, which I guess we should. Um, for me, I would prioritize these guys and say I would want uh, Lonzo, Kuzma, KCP, R uh, yeah, Lon Lonzo, Kuzma, Randall, KCP, Brooke Lopez, Isaiah Thomas. That would be my order on FanDuel. But, I mean, these guys are going to make up large swaths of my lineup. Uh, the scoring here should be just out of control. Lakers have been... You know, playing hard, playing dudes in huge minutes. So as long as that continues, uh, everything is going to come up aces for the Lakers tonight. They will probably lose, but uh, you know they're going to have a lot of very viable fantasy options. So let's plug the projections in and see what spits out. I'm so far ahead of schedule today, but. There's really just not that much to talk about for this slate. Four games, everybody knows what's what. And uh, I'm still sniffly. Alrighty, so change that, bump that to 10, and go. Oh, that's so much Durant. Okay, so I would agree that Durant is um, sort of that must-play guy. Who does it give me at center? It gives me mostly Vooch, so I'm going to be happy to go that direction. I think it would be in my best interest to look at Kelly Olenek, so it would be these three lineups. Um... I mean, that I like a lot more if if we find out that Aaron Gordon is out, that lineup looks great to me. Um, I would also be fine entertaining something like this, 
This one, I probably wouldn't want to have four warriors. That, that's... I'd either want... I'd be okay with Quinn Cook. I'd be okay with Omri Caspi. I'm not going to play two minimum salary guys from the Lakers. So, uh, I think these two look a little bit more feasible to me. But those would be directions I would be going. And then we'll go ahead and upload again. This is going to be one of the quicker videos I've had. And go. Oh, yeah. Durant's way more expensive. I was like, why in the world is Durant only at 50%? But I forgot he's got a really weird price. <laughs> okay. So on DK, we want to grab Kuzma first. Um, another situation where we probably want Vooch. Uh, I'll safely grab Jason Tatum. Tyler Johnson, grab KCP, so, yeah, like right there, Bledsoe, Tyler Johnson, Tatum, Randall, Vooch, KCP, Caspi, Kuzma, I think that's aces, um, you know, if you want to get a little bit of exposure to the Wizards, I think this looks fine. Uh, or dual exposure to the Wizards here, bringing in Otto Porter. Um, look, you can get to Durant tonight, but on DK, it seems to me like balanced is the way to go. You're going to want to jam everybody in that like four to eight range. Alrighty, that's where I'm at. Um, I'll be around most of the day. Well, you don't want that screen. Uh, I'll be around most of the day. Uh, I'll have updates up all throughout the day, but yeah, no live stream tonight. I'll shoot to go live. I don't know. I got to talk to the wife and figure out what we're doing since uh, obviously tonight is not going to be uh, this crappy Wednesday slate where I do birthday things for her. She will not get home until nine o'clock at best if she can get a flight out of Boston. Thanks, Snow. Uh, so yeah, uh, we'll figure that out moving forward. Um, I will be back in the morning, though. Uh, if you guys have questions for me, hit me up. Follow me on Twitter. Uh, like and subscribe if this was cool for you. Happy to be slowly getting myself back. Apologize for the uh, for the extended muting that I gave you guys. Um, I assume that you're not all lip readers, and that probably wasn't the most thrilling experience. What are you going to do? What's the production value around here? Best of luck tonight, guys, and uh, I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.